Good evening, everybody. Thank you all very much for coming out on this very rainy evening. It's great to see all of you here. Uh, my name is Paul Webb, and um, I've been a financial planner for many, many years, and I have uh, some great credentials. Uh, I, have, I have an MBA from one of the top business schools in the nation. Um, I um, am also a part of the Million Dollar Roundtable Club, uh, which is uh, means you're in the top 1% of all financial advisors in the United States. So I'm a very fortunate man and very blessed, and I'm blessed and thankful to be here tonight. So this evening, we're going to talk about uh, retirement planning solutions. Um, we're going to look at a variety of areas, and as we go along, if y'all have questions, you know, please reach out and um, you know, raise your hand or whatever and just let me know. I'd like this to be a dialogue, not a monologue. And I, you know, I want to make sure everybody's engaged and get all their questions answered. And I'm here to be a resource and a teacher. Uh, this is going to be one of many seminars to come. And tonight's uh, is called Guaranteed Income in Retirement. So we'll go through this and uh, here are my a deck of slides here. Uh, as an overview, we're going to talk about risks in retirement. We're going to talk about the six steps to financial wealth. Uh, the four uh, financial cornerstones. We're going to talk about protecting your money, growing your money, and keeping your money risk-free, managing your risk as best as we can. Um, we're going to talk about tax-free guaranteed income, and then we're going to talk about the best way to maximize your Social Security. So anyhow, we will move ahead here. So the next slide. So the first thing in introducing your retirement income planning is the key retirement risks to consider. Hey, life expectancy. Unfortunately, only the big man knows how long we're going to live. So we can't predict that. So we just have to manage with the best information we have. You know, how long did your parents live? How's your health? Are you doing the right things? Are you eating the right foods? It's, it's a whole myriad of things. So life expectancy is big because we want your assets and your income sources to last a lifetime. And again, unfortunately, no one knows how long that is. We also want to be able to beat inflation. With your retirement income, it needs to increase at least at the same rate as inflation. Um, and then God forbid, death of a spouse, you lose a partner. Uh, income needs, you know, need to consider for a couple, you know, must also include what happens if your partner passes away. So. Um, investment returns. As we all know, the stock market can be a great thing. It can also be very volatile. And um, fixed income like investments like bonds and CDs, hey, they change over time. So we're going to show you some vehicles that are real income producers, guaranteed, risk-free, zero, zero opportunity to lose money. So also health care costs is a big consideration. And unfortunately, it seems like the rates are just continuing to increase and increase, kind of like this real estate market we have going on right now. So that's a big, big concern. Also, you know, God forbid you need long-term care, you have to go into a nursing home or, or uh, later in life, and you want to be prepared to be able to handle that so it doesn't deplete all of the blood, sweat, and tear income that you've had. All right, so we'll go on to the next slide. Um, why is there a need for retirement income planning. Well, I'm gonna tell you why. Planning equals success. When you plan to do something, your likelihood of success is a lot better if you have good planning. Those who plan have been found to be much more successful, not only financially, but they worry less. Why? Because they have a plan. And they report more life satisfaction. So they're not looking at the stock market every day. Oh my God, my fortune is down. I lost $80,000. We're going to create a program where your money is only going to do one thing. It's going to grow. And in many cases, tax-free, depending on the programs we go with. And you're going to know every year exactly how much accumulation of money and how it's going to grow. So um, uh, we'll look at the next slide here, which is... When should retirement income planning begin? We often think about accumulating resources while you're working all your years in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and generating retirement income is kind of two separate topics or two separate phases, but really they need to work together. So figuring out how to generate income from assets, 
facing frailty with other risks that we talked about, and new considerations that should be addressed when you're thinking and about retiring. So the stakes are very high, and at a late stage in life, when you're in your 50s and 60s, income phase, sometimes there's less time to recover from mistakes. So that's why if you're in your 30s and 40s, you want to start planning now because in 20, 25 years, you're going to want to retire and you want to have a nest egg and a plan. All right, going on to the next slide. Um, there's a continuing of a savings phase, and let me get into this with you, uh, to the spending phase. So basically, uh, you know, as you're accumulating money, of course, you're spending it, you're buying houses, maybe you're having children, you're buying nice cars, you know, vacations, all those types of things. But uh, while you're spending, you can also be saving, and we have plans for those. We have programs like young people in their 20s and 30s can start investing a certain amount of money in a um, high-income uh, compounded product that's tax-free, and when they're 50 or 60 years old, they'll have a couple million dollars. So it's a very exciting stuff and stuff that you can start at a young age and not be at 50 or 60 and saying, oh, what am I going to do? i got to work another 10 or 20 years. So learning to visualize your retirement lifestyle, it, it makes saving easier. If you know you're going to be taking trips and going around the world and you have a beautiful couple vacation spots around the world, those are good things. Those make me feel good, and I hope that they make you feel good. So anyhow, um, uh, going through this some more, you know, um, talk about the risks, the long-term care and things like that, uh, you know, burning up your income for that. We have programs and we have uh, certain frameworks of policies that we can put in place that will pay not only a death benefit to loved ones, it'll pay living benefits. Let's say you're injured on the job and you just can't work anymore. You become disabled and you can't work. At that period, if you're 35 or 42 or whatever, we have policies that will pay 90% right then. You send in a doctor's letter and you say, I've been injured on the job, I can't work anymore, I can't earn money, I can't pay my mortgage or my car note or take care of my family. We cut you a check for up to 90% with a doctor's letter. So that can be huge and a life changer for instead of being miserable, for the rest of your life, even though you may be disabled, financially you're still able to provide for your family and take care of yourself. So in many ways, retirement income planning starts uh, when saving for retirement begins, uh, choosing a job that has an excellent retirement program, maybe something with a 401k plan, that type of thing. Oftentimes there's also a heightened awareness, you know, starting to think about retirement five or 10 years um, when you want to stop working. So. It's, uh, it's real important to plan early and, and to get on with it. So, okay, that's that. Um, so what has to be done to create a retirement uh, plan? So we'll go through that. So you need to build a plan uh, that requires action steps. You actually do things. You start saving money monthly. You start building a, a real true forecast and a budget. And you get, we gather data. We, that's why you know, financial advisors, oh, they just want to come talk to me and hear about my goals. And, but that's what you have to do to really develop a real good plan. We need to gather data. We need to know budgets. We need to know what your goals are. Determine your goals. When you want to retire. You know, how much money are you going to need to support your lifestyle when you stop working? So we always ask, hey, when are you thinking about retiring? That's when we get into the Social Security conversation. We get into... If you start putting away X amount of money now, you're going to be at this level. So we look at all those things. But, um, you know, we need a plan that's realistic. We're not going to say pie in the sky, you know, at 60, I'm going to have $10 million. That is possible. It takes a lot of planning, and, and it's possible. But we want something that's realistic. If you're making $150,000 a year and you want $150,000 in retirement, that's very doable with the right plan. Or if you're making $80,000 and you'd be perfectly happy with $80,000, then that, you know, that's good too. So we want it realistic and we want it doable and something is not going to make you miserable in your life because you, don't, you don't have any available money to spend on things that you want to do. So we consider risks, we consider tax consequences, we consider legal considerations and ways to convert assets into income. We put this together, we consider alternatives, we choose a course of action for you. Don't stop here. You have to implement it. You have to take action, make it happen. And we revise it over time 
as conditions and situations and circumstances change. Okay, so who is involved in uh, creating a retirement income plan? Well, uh, expertise is required. That's where I come in as a financial professional. I consult you, I'm gonna ask you a ton of questions, and I need good, solid, accurate information to, to develop a proper plan for you. Um, so that's where I come in with a professional designation. I have that. Um, I'm certified, licensed in five states. Um, I have a retirement income certified professional, a credential, and others. Uh, you need a lawyer to, to, to develop the legal documents. You need a trust or a will and a way to you know, pass on money to, um, to your children. Um, you need accountants for tax planning. I consult with accountants, I consult with attorneys, I consult with folks who write trusts all the time. Because that's the only way to get everything right. It's just not a one-phase thing, it's a comprehensive plan. Um, you need investment advisors, like from someone like me, I happen to be a licensed insurance agent and a licensed uh, financial professional. So I can do both for you, so that, that, that's definitely a good thing. All right, so moving on to the next slide, we do a financial needs analysis, and uh, we look at everything. And this is getting into the six steps, excuse me, of uh, financial independence. Um, okay, so the first thing is cash flow. We want to look at uh, earning additional income and managing expenses, setting a budget, like I said. Uh, the next thing we look at is an emergency fund. You need three to six months income prepared for unexpected unexpected expenses you know you've heard people say I live from paycheck to paycheck you know God bless them I'm sorry that that's the case but um, you know with some planning and some forecasting and some budgeting you won't be in that situation you'll have an emergency fund if something comes up you won't miss a mortgage payment you won't miss a car payment so that's my job to make sure you're prepared for unforeseen circumstances prepare for unexpected expenses uh, next, we look at uh, debt, excuse me, debt management. Uh, let me hit that again. Debt management. So we want to consolidate debt. We want to strive to eliminate debt as much as possible. Some things you want to keep, like a mortgage, because of the tax benefits you get from that. But, you know, we can get into those conversations. You want proper protection. Uh, protection against loss of income. Remember I mentioned that we have uh, policies and vehicles that can protect you if you were to lose your income from becoming disabled or having a, a major medical event, heart attack, stroke, cancer, anything like that. Um, we, have, we have strategies and uh, vehicles to help you manage that. Protect your family assets. You don't want one thing to wipe you out because you lost your income. You want to have a plan to deal with those uncertainties. The next thing is we want to build wealth. We want to strive to outpace inflation and we want professional money management and we want to reduce taxes so that's what we do and the last thing that we're going to look at tonight in the six steps to financial independence are preserving wealth reducing taxation and building a family legacy all right so the next area we're going to look at is financial cornerstones um, we're going to look at four different areas four areas the first one is protection how am i going to protect my income uh, what am i going to do and those are some of the things that I spoke about. The second thing is growth. How am I gonna grow my money so that I have more and more and more as I go along in my career with based on savings, investing in the right vehicles. The third thing we're gonna look at is safety. How safe is your money? If you're in the stock market, your money is 100% at risk. Does everyone, or does anyone in the room, raise your hand if you do, in 2008, remember what happened? People lost 40% of their 401ks, and they're calling their investors every day or their advisors, what's going on, what's going on? It keeps going down and going down. And suddenly, they've lost almost half of their entire savings of their life. Blood, sweat, and tears, it's gone. And you know what? I'll show you some slides later on. If it goes down, if you have $100 and it goes down 50%, you're at $50. So if you go up 50% and then you're still at only $75 out of 100. So it takes a 100% return to restore you when you have a 50% loss in the market. And I'll show you about that later. 
But anyhow, so safety is very important, and we look at that and we build a plan to, to meet all that. Last thing is tax advantages. I mean, no one wants to pay taxes. Does anyone in this room want to pay taxes? Raise your hand. I don't think so. Nobody likes to pay taxes. And we develop strategies so that your money grows tax-free. All right, we're going to go on to the next slide here. Financial foundation, uh, proper protection. Uh, as you can see across the top there, life insurance can help. Life insurance can really help. As you can see here, let's see. So we create living benefits. I talked to you about policies and vehicles that can help. The living benefits help if you become very sick and you can't work or you become disabled. Um, we do supplemental retirement income. We also cover education expenses and uh, replace income uh, for dependents. Uh, we get it set up for those folks that are older and they're going to be going, going to be with the Lord soon. We set up final expense plans. We create inheritance for your heirs. Uh, we uh, pay federal and uh, we try to avoid paying federal and state uh, estate taxes. And we do that through an estate planning attorney and trusts and wills. There's many ways to get around it. Um, we also create a source of savings um, and finally provide funds for charitable contributions, as you see there. So moving ahead, what type of life insurance is right for you? Well, there's a couple of different ones. There's term insurance. Term insurance is basically a policy that's set for a fixed term of life insurance, and it provides coverage uh, for a set of a period of time, as I said, and uh, it does not have a cash element doesn't build cash value and I'm going to show you how a cash value policy can be much better for you but it's good in the short run it's inexpensive and it gives you the coverage if God forbid something happens to you and most of the policies that I work with also provide the living benefits so policies less expensive than permanent policies but they don't build cash value over time the term policies do not permanent insurance or permanent permanent life insurance policies uh, remain in effect uh, for until the, until you die. So that's why it's permanent because there's no term on it. It goes until you die, which is good because, as we said in the beginning, nobody knows when the good Lord is going to call you home. So many permanent life insurance policies also allow the policy and the owner to allocate premiums, like doing a certain amount each month. We can do it, and we can illustrate up to twenty or thirty years and track exactly each year how much your money grows and how it works and the potential growth over time. All right, moving along here, uh, options for your money. There's various ways to invest your money here in broad terms, and uh, we'll show you three options. There's fixed type of uh, options uh, where your money is growing at a fixed rate. We have, uh, as you see there with the graph, uh, we have variable. And uh, that can be, you know, up and down. And that can be good and bad. Kind of like the stock market. It's variable. One day it's up, one day it's down. Your mood is, is dependent upon what the stock market's doing. And that, I don't think that's a fun way to live. And then there's an indexed uh, type of uh, options for your money. This is whereby, like, we have vehicles whereby we can guarantee you a certain amount, say, like 4% every year, no matter what. If the stock market crashes, we still deliver you 4%. Or let's say the stock market does great and delivers you know, 12, 13, 14%, you're able to take advantage of that with an indexed product. So it's, it's real important and we'll be able to show you all these options. All right, moving ahead here. Um, so what we're showing here is this index locks your money in. So um, let's see here. So for example, C, your money is here, it goes up, it stays there, it's locked in. Then let's say it's a real bad year in the market and people lose a ton of money. You don't lose a dime. Your money's locked in. Your money, your principal, and your accumulation is that number. It goes over here. Then the market starts to grow again. You go up here, you make more money. Your money's locked in there, which is very good. And then over here, let's say the market, as you see, the market goes down. But you don't lose a dime. So you never lose a dime. You're here, you're here, you're here, you're here, you're here. And then you go up and you're up here at the top of the market. Let's say it crashes, just crashes, loses 40% like 2008. You don't lose a dime. 
you don't make any money that year, but you don't lose a dime or your accumulation. That's why these types of products are so powerful. All right, let's, uh, let me move ahead here and see what we got. So, I mean, the choice is yours. How do you want your money to grow? Okay, so compounded interest. I'm gonna show you a couple things here. The first thing is called a rule of 72. This basically shows uh, how much your money can earn over time with an investment of $10,000 at different rates of return starting and say if you started investing $10,000, uh, say a year, um, how it would go. If you had a 6% return uh, and, and you looked at 12 years and then you had uh, the other one there, 10% at 7.2 years, um, we'll show you how they roll. So at 29, if you had $10,000 and it compounded 6%, uh, at 41, you're going to have $20,000, which isn't a big growth. But that's a conservative number. We have products that will deliver up to 20, 30% growth. So that will quadruple your money or more. So you can see at 53, you'd have 40,000, and at 65, you'd have 80,000. Um, if you look at the 10% growth uh, over 7.2 years, you can see the growth at 29 years old, you put $10,000 in at 36, you have 20,000, at 43, you have 40,000, at 50 years old, you have 80,000, at 57, you have 160, and at 65, you have 320,000, and at 72, you have 640. Could you imagine if it was something other than 10%, if it was 20 or 30%? You would this all these numbers would be double. You'd have a million too. You start with ten thousand dollars at twenty nine, and when you got in your late sixties, early seventies, you'd have a million too. So we have various products that we can show you, and go from there. Okay, so let's talk about risk, market risk, risk the impact of losses. It hurts you more than you think. Uh, as I said earlier, if you lose fifty percent of a hundred dollars, what rate of return does it? take to get back to 100 so $100 and you lose 50% so you're at $50 right okay so as we go along um, $50 let's say you go back up uh, 50% you're still at only $75 so in the market when you lose 50% you've lost half your money and you have to gain as I'll show here $100 to get back to where you were, 100%. So uh, say say option A, a 50% gain only gets you back to 75. 100% gain is required to fully recover from a 50% loss. That's why we're not fans of the market. Sure, it can do some good things, and if you work for a company and you have stock options and you're an executive vice president or something of that company, absolutely do the, do the market. Uh, and I don't discourage 401ks with matching, but as you get closer to retiring, I encourage my clients to pull it out and then and protect the money. We put it in a fund like we showed where you never lose money and your money only grows and it's protected and safe. Because at 50 or 60 years old, you don't want to lose 50%. It'll take you the rest of your life to get it back and you're gonna have to work for another 10 or 15 years and who wants to do that? I want to retire early and have fun. Go on my sailboat. All right, so moving along. This is how money gets taxed. We're talking about reducing impact of taxes. There's a column here that says tax now. Savings accounts and certificates of deposit. Each year you have to pay taxes on those. Then there's tax later. You, people don't realize between the fees and the taxes in a 401k, it is horrific. I can show you, if I, you sit down with me, I can show you how um, between fees and taxes, when you take that distribution and you're uh, after 65 or after 59, um, that you're, you're between your fees and your taxes, it can eat up several hundred thousand dollars of your 401k, whereas we have some tax-free with minimal fees and you get to keep most of your money. So you can see tax later is 401ks, IRAs, fixed annuities and savings bonds. Um, the third one is tax advantage. That can be Roth IRAs, which can be good. However, Roth IRAs are still in the market. They still have market risk. Cash accumulation insurance policy, no risk at all. You can get compounded interest up to 10% or more. It's tax-free. 
it's tax-free money. It accumulates tax-free. And when you take the distribution, when you're ready to retire, um, it's tax-free. How do we do that? Tax code 7702. It's a tax code that the IRS has approved for large insurance companies. We have a ton of cash and we can pay it. And we can pay it and accumulate it tax-free. So that's very important. Keep that in mind. So those are some types of vehicles that we would share with you if we were to get together. Okay, the last slide of the evening um, is a very important. Social Security maximization. Does anybody in the room know what Social Security is? What type of fund it is? Okay, well, I'll tell you. It is an annuity. That is all a Social Security program is, is an annuity. And people say, you know, you hear negative things from Dave Ramsey and others about, about annuities. Tell me you don't want your Social Security check every month because it's an annuity. So anyhow, annuity is a very powerful financial instrument. So what I encourage you to do is, is go to www.ssa.gov, my account, Look up your Social Security, you set up an account, you give them your social, and you set up an account, and that will tell you, oh, excuse me, I went backwards there, let's see, hold on, there we go, okay. So, um, go and review you and your spouse's earnings. You can look at it at 62 years old, 67, and 70, and record it. Why do you do that? Because if you take Social Security, and people say, I want it as soon as I'm dead at 62, when you take it at 62, you're actually only getting 74% of what you could get if you wait till about 67 in 10 months or 68, depending on your age, it's a little different. But if you wait till 67, you get 100% monthly versus what you would get at 62. If you wait till 70, you get 124% over and above. So you could max out potentially at 70 years old at $3,700 a month versus at 62, maybe $1,700 a month. So it's very important. Now, obviously, the biggest, um, the biggest issue uh, in Social Security, so, and, and by the way, we have a Social Security estimator and we evaluate use of you know, the past options. We'll look at your, your spouse's Social Security benefit and the spouse that has the, the largest earning, you want to look at that because as a spouse, you can actually take your husband or your wife, if the wife's a, a bigger earner, Social Security. So you wanna look at that and manage that very carefully. Obviously, the biggest question in Social Security is your life expectancy. And as we said in the very first slide, in the first few sentences, I said, nobody knows when they're gonna be called home. So life expectancy is important. If you're in poor health at 62 and your parents died in their early 60s or you unfortunately have cancer or something in your family, you may want to take your Social Security at 62. If your parents live till you know late 70s, late 80s, if your parent, if you think you're going to live to your late 80s and your parents live to your late 80s, don't take that Social Security to at least 67. So you get the full amount. And if you think that you know you may be someone who lives in their 80s or 90s, excuse me, we'll calculate your earnings and we'll come up with uh, exactly what you need and what's best for you. And in closing, you know anybody that has questions, you know please ask questions or see me afterwards. I have uh, some handouts here. I'd like to get you on my schedule and get you set up. So in your uh, in your pocket folder there uh, on your desk, you'll see a calendar. And if you could turn in your information, know your name, email, phone, address, um, and tell me when you might want to meet and what's best for you, we can follow up with you or we can schedule it right here. Again, I want to get you on my calendar. I'm just a couple miles up the road. I have a great office. And we'll sit down and look at everything. I'll be able to talk for an hour or two or however long you want. We'll study your current situation and we'll develop a plan that will have you winning in retirement. So. I want to thank everybody again for the opportunity tonight 
and uh, please fill out the sheet again with your information and there's also a, a feedback um, on the course how you felt about it and how you felt about me as your instructor and I look forward to seeing you all soon hopefully in my office or I'll be calling you and we'll see what we can set up God bless you all have a great night and thank you so much for your time take care